I'm going to try my best to, 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 to follow the leading of the Lord this morning. Welcome to Crosswalk. Hope you've had a great week. Do you know that God cares for you? Do you know that God loves you? Do you know that, 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 that God knows us by name? And, and, and this is kind of a tongue-in-cheek one. Did you know that God even knows the hairs of your head? Those of you who have hair on your head. Why are y'all looking at him? There's an old song, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. And it kind of let me kind of just do a sidebar to that. Did you know God sees everything you do? He knows everything that you do. He hears everything you see. He, he, he knows every time you click on that mouse of the computer or that little, what's that thing called, the little tab thing that you move. You, you don't even have to have a mouse nowadays. Nowadays, you actually can speak some things, and they, they pop up. It's voice activated. Pretty soon, they're going to have, they've already got it in the military, they're going to have a retina scan. Before you can go online, you're going to have to show your eyeball. You think I'm crazy. Listen, remember Dick Tracy, those of you who are old? Remember the, the watches? They're here now. Listen, we are moving fastly toward a, 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 a controlled society where the government, I'm not going to get sidetracked, I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm more disciplined, where the society where everything you do is recorded. Every 99% of what you do right now online or in your bank or, or on your television is recorded somewhere. It's there. It's called the cloud. Listen. And the Bible had an answer to that, Brother Rodney, many years ago. It says, be sure your sins will find you out. So let me challenge you, not, 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 not reprimand you, not beat you down, not make you feel bad unless you're doing something wrong, then I want you to feel bad. The Lord wants you to feel bad. Repent of it, get it right, and keep going. Let me challenge you to do better. You're a Christian. You're a child of God. You have a Heavenly Father who wants you to be a light in this dark and dying world. Listen to this. I was thinking this morning coming on, what does God want each of, uh, from each of his leaders and the people who attend church each week? And number two, what do you expect when you come to God's house? When the singers get up here, when the pastor gets up here, when, when guest speakers get up here, when services are conducted, what do you expect? What do you expect? And it seemed like the Spirit of God just checked me and said, listen, what, what is needed more now is good, sound, biblical teaching. What thus saith the word of God. Some of you are spiritual babes in Christ. You're just beginning your spiritual walk and journey. If you don't have a good foundation when the devil comes and the winds blow and the devil says, boo, you're going to back up and be afraid. But we don't have to be afraid, friend. We're a people of God. We're children of God. We don't have to fear. The Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Some of you need to get that last one, the sound mind. Listen, our minds are so turned and twisted with everything else that's going on around us that we don't get our mind focused on God. So with that said, I'm going to try to teach you some, so some, some good sound doctrine just ne for the next hour and a half, if you can hold on. I was just joking. I'll say something in class every now and then, and the kids will look at me like, huh? I'll walk up and I'll say, it was a joke. I could go in so many different directions. I could talk about the, the, the gay rights issue that is permeating our society. I won't talk about that. I could take, uh, talk to you about the political unrest that's, that's in, our, in, in, in America. I can talk to you about the wars and rumors of wars that are going on in the Middle East. 
I could talk to you about the people that are saying peace and safety and where the word of God says when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child. Those of you who have, given, who have given birth, you know when that child's about to be delivered. We who are part of the body of Christ, we know that something uh, great is about to happen. We know that there's turmoil, but we, we, we have this, this excitement, this, this nervous expectancy. Hey, something exciting is about to happen. Something's got to give. Something's got to give. With that in mind, I want to turn your attention to Proverbs, the sixth chapter. The Proverbs, the sixth chapter, beginning with first, verse 16. Proverbs 6 and 16. It says, These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. You know, God hates some things. God hates some things. God is a God of love, but there are some things that God hates. Number one, a proud look. There's nothing wrong with having pride. There's nothing long, long, wrong with looking good. There's nothing wrong with checking yourself. If some of you came to church the way you got up this morning. Mm. We think it was Halloween all over again. There's nothing wrong with taking pride in how you look. When you go out into the world, when you go on your jobs, when you go in certain directions, you need to take and be presentable. You need to take pride that you're a child of God, that you're a, a part of the kingdom. But those who have a proud look, they think that it's, it's all that, as the young people used to say, I'm all that in a bag of chips. I don't know what the new phase is now. I, 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 I'm kind of out of that at this point. A proud look. Did you know Lucifer five times in the book of Isaiah, I think the 14th chapter, he said, I will do this, I will do that, I will do this, I will exalt myself. When you start being arrogant, when you start being prideful, it's all about you and, and how you look, how it makes you look, then guess what, my friend? You're in for a fall. The Bible says pride go up before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. These six things, yea, seven are an abomination, a proud look, a lying tongue. Now, I, I, I'm very careful. I don't, how many of you, I, and I'm going to ask you to interact with this part. How many of you have a family member? Everybody has one. They, they know how to embellish. They know how to, to really build up a story, and you know they're lying. Don't look at anybody in the congregation. A lying tongue. Ananias and Sapphira in the fifth chapter of the book of Acts, they came before the man of God, and the man of God began to talk with them, and, and they didn't have to do this, and the man of God began to talk with them and, and said, you know, I hear you've sold some land. Have you sold it? Ananias comes in and said, yeah. Man, I'm in front of the church. I got it made. I'm going to make myself look good. The Bible says that Ananias began to lie about what he had done. The Bible says just as soon as he did, the Spirit of God left, uh, struck him dead. The Bible says that the, they carried him out. A few minutes later, his wife, Sapphira, Sapphira, Sapphira comes in and... and, and, and the Bible says that, 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 that she, she addresses the man of God and she begins to talk and she says, you know, her and her husband had conspired. Be sure your sins will find you out. They had conspired and, and, and Peter said, have you done such and such? Your, your husband says, or I don't know the, the, the whole intricate details of the conversation. Sapphire said, yep, I sold my lamb for such and such. The Bible says, listen, you hear the feet of those who just carried your husband out dead? They're coming to carry you out and she died. She had a lying tongue. Those of you who remember the story about the little boy who cried wolf? He would always cry wolf. He would, a wolf's coming. They'd run out to protect him and protect the sheep. But one time, he, that last time he called, nobody was there to help him. A lying tongue. A lying tongue. Number three, hands that shed innocent blood. The Bible says in Matthew 7 and 1, anybody quote that? Judge not that you be not judged, for with what judgment you judge, you should be judged also. We need to be careful. Remember the mob mentality? You know what the mob mentality is? Hang them, hang them, hang them. Remember the, 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 the lady or the queen in, in uh, uh, Alice in Wonderland? She was always saying, off with their head, off with their head. 
She never wanted to hear the facts. She just wanted to shed innocent blood. She just wanted to shed. She just wanted to destroy somebody. She just wanted to take and do harm to somebody. Listen, your tongue is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. What you say does help or hurt others. What you say, if the way it comes out, my wife and I have been married 36 years, and every now and then we, we have a moment. We have a debate. I'm trying to discipline myself that when my words come out, that they don't hurt her, that they don't wound her, because the Bible says it's better to dwell in the corner of a housetop than with an angry woman in an open house. But then it says... In Proverbs 18 and 22, I believe, whosoever findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor from the Lord. So we have to be careful about our pilot shed innocent blood. Number four, a heart that deviseth wicked imagination. Remember the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah? Remember the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah? What happened to them, friend? They were destroyed. What's happening to America? The sins of the same sins are permeating our society. Pastor, you can't speak on that. Brother Gordon, you can't speak. Listen, we had better speak on, against things. Do I, I, do I go out there and just proclaim it, stand on the housetop and, and start saying, bless God, bless God? No. But by our lives and by our actions, we can show that certain things are wrong in society. They're going to Christians now in the Middle East. They're going to Christians in, in, in a lot of our foreign countries. What happened in Kenya? What happened in Kenya in just the last week and a half? They, re- they went into the dorm of these college students, these college students, and said, recite the Koran. Are you a, a Muslim or are you a Christian? When they said they were a Christian, they killed them on the spot. 140-plus of them killed them on the spot. Because they profess to be a Christian. They're going into villages all up and down. Uh, the, some of those countries over there. They're, they're killing the dads. They're killing the sons. They're taking captives the wives. They're taking the children ages 1 to 9 years old and selling them. Because they're Christians. They're Christians. A heart that deviseth wicked imagination. Number five. Feet that be swift to run into mischief. Have you ever been... Uh, uh, the stoning of Stephen was there. And as, as they were stoning Stephen because he was a Christian, because he was a child of God, because he was a follower of Christ, they were stoning him and people were running up. Wow. Man, let, let me pick up a stone. They, we have to be careful how we throw off on people. Number six, a false witness that speaketh lies. They hired false witnesses against Jesus. Everything that Jesus did was good. Even when he went into the temple and got mad and turned over the money changers' tables and said, my house is supposed to be a house of prayer, but you've made it a den of thieves. Some churches now, thank God for your pastor, Ron, and Pastor Brandon. You better thank God for your pastors. Thank God for your leaders. That this is not a house, a den of thieves. It's a house of prayer. It's a house of worship. Last but not least, those who sow discord among the believers. Those who did sow discord among the brethren, among the believers. The, there, there's an old saying, united we stand, divided we fall. Crosswalk Church will stand or fall through united or, through, or, or, or division. Listen to this. No one is immune. How many of you have been married over five years? Six years? Eight, ten years. Listen to me. You're not immune in your marriage to the attack of the devil. You're not immune to discord. You're in a relationship now with someone, either a friend relationship or a a, a, a business relationship. You're not immune to discord and problems. Those who sow those discords will be judged by God. God hates it. Let me go on. Hold on. Fasten your seatbelt. Pretend like you fasten your seatbelt. Good job. Some of you did a lap belt. Some of you did a chest belt. And if Tony would cut that air on, I'd do a better belt. Listen to this. Thanks, Tony. Uh, Listen, I'm so glad that even, even though God hates the sin, he loves the sinner. You ready? Here we go. I'm going to go. 
Uh, of such were some of us. Some of you once were unsaved. You were, you were not a part of the family of God. You were not a child of God. You were dying and going to a devil's hell. Just accept that fact. You weren't perfect enough to make it to that place called heaven. Of such were some of you. But guess what? You've been washed. Listen to this. But now we are saved, blood bought, on our way to that place called heaven. How many of you believe in heaven? Remember that old song, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die? I want to go to heaven. The only way I'm going to get there is through the blood. My mom's a great godly Christian woman, but guess what? She can't get me to heaven. Those of you sitting here, your wife may be saved. You may be saved and your uh, significant other, your children may be unsaved. But guess what? Guess what? They're not going to get to heaven on your coattail, and you're not going to get to heaven on their coattail. You've got to go for your own. We are in the world, but not of the world. We can't act and do like the world and expect God to bless us. You can't go out there and have road rage and run your run your um, run run people off the road or cuss people or uh, and whatever and all of it and expect to uh, receive God's blessings. You can't. You can't cuss and rant and rave and do like the world and expect God to. Some of you are smiling. You know what that road rage is all about. Last two messages, this one and the last one, I think that came up for some reason. We cannot act like the world and expect God to bless us. We cannot live like the world and talk like the world and be like the world and look like the world and expect God's blessings. You can't. I'm sorry. You can't do it. You're either in the world or you're not in the world. You're either in God or you're not in God. There's no in between. Listen, there's no in between. You're either going up or you're going down. You're going to heaven or you're going to hell. I'm going up or I'm going down. I'm going to heaven or I'm going to hell. Listen to this. Matthew 5 and 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We are Christians. Can you say that with me? We are Christians. We are people of God. We are servants of the Most High. We are a light in the darkness. We are a light in the darkness. Listen, I could, get, I could spend an hour. Uh, I, I keep up with politics. I watch MSNBC. I'm sorry, I watch Fox. I watch both sides. Listen, you narrow-minded people, you just watch one side or the other. How can you stand up and, and talk about one thing and not know all the facts? That's about like a preacher standing up and preaching the Word of God and he's never read the Bible. That's about like me saying, hey, you can make it 36 years in marriage if you learn to shut your mouth. I could have some fun at my wife's expense, but I'm not going to. I got in some serious trouble the last time. No, the time before that. Whosoever findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor from the Lord. It's better to dwell in the corner of a housetop than with an angry woman in an open house. Whew. Listen, we aren't perfect, but we are forgiven. We don't have all the answers, but we know who does. The church and the message of the cross is under attack. Do you believe that? Some of you ostrich Christians. Oh, no, everything's going to hell in a handbasket. And I, I please don't take that wrong. I, 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 try not, I, I try my best not to use that phrase unless it's in, in a right context. You stick your head in the sand and you say, wow, it's going to get better when I get my head out. It ain't going to get better, people. Well, if we would just select a Republican. Let me tell you something, you polit polit people who try to bring politics and uh, connect politics and the church together, it ain't going to work, and it ain't biblically sound. Listen, you can re elect, I, I promise you, and you mark my words, this 12th day of, uh, of April 2015, 
if a Democrat gets back in or if a Republican gets back in, it's going to be worse. Either one that gets in, because you're going to have that Democrat that's going to try to push more progressive and liberal agendas. You're going to have that Republican that's going to try to take and ch change everything back. You're going to have rebellion and division. United we stand, divided we fall. Listen, let me give you a message and a challenge for Crosswalk Church and for your own personal life. You stand firm in the faith. You live for God. You let God open the doors that need to be opened. You let God shut the doors that need to be shut. And watch what God can do. But when you try to lean this political side one way, and I'm a Democrat, I'm a Republican, I'm a conservative. I think i got to put the conservative on the Democrat side. When you just start naming that, listen, you need to say, I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. We are facing difficult times that are going to get worse. And I want to ask you a question in closing as I close. This is my first one. Y'all keep up with it. Does your anchor hold? Does your anchor hold? Does your anchor hold in these last days? Years ago, I was, I was a, 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 very, a novice at any and everything. I was so glad that I had adults and men around me that were good leaders and that were patient with me and that said, that man, that boy, if he ever makes it in this thing called life, he'll be okay. I would totally mess up. I would blow it. I would just, I'd be about like uh, it would be now if, if Freddie hired me to help him put in a headliner. I'd mess it up. and uh, Freddie said, mm, I don't know if he's going to make it or not. But if Freddie was a better teacher, You know, there's always the blame game. We want to blame everybody else. Years ago, I was out on a boat with three other, three other gentlemen. It was a small boat. Uh, we, we got out there, and all of a sudden, he, uh, he, there, somehow we got on a sandbar, and the, the, the prop sheared off of the propeller. So he threw out the anchor. And guess what? The anchor wasn't holding. There was, a, there was a little bit of a wade there, and the guy looked at us, he, him being a little bit more experienced. He said, if we don't get help, we're going to drift out there into that, in, to that outlet, and we're going to drift on out into the ocean. And I'm sitting there, not me. I jumped in the water, not knowing whether there were sharks there, not knowing whether there were eels there, not knowing whether a crab was hungry and he was going to bite my toe. And I pulled that boat to shore around the edge and got up there because I knew that that anchor wasn't holding, but I didn't want to drift out there. So I'm asking you again, does your anchor hold? What anchors your life? What anchors your life? Is it drugs, alcohol, pornography? What anchors your, whole, your life? What anchors you? My wife gave me a compliment yesterday. And she, I don't think she knew she gave me a compliment. What stabilizes you? And I'm going to say this, and I'll, I'll, I'll just, I've been married 36 years. I've stuck my foot in my mouth more than one time, and I'll probably do it again before I die, and it may be today. So we were having a conversation about something, and she said about the governors being off. You know what a governor is, right? It, it, it regulates the speed. She said, when you're gone, Gordon, the governors won't be there. See, oh, thank God I got an amen. I didn't get an old me. God puts governors on us to stabilize us, to keep us focused. Because this pulpit right here is not to be used as a bully pulpit. To, to persuade you, uh, Pastor Ron's thinking, or my thinking, or Brandon's thinking, or anybody else's thinking. It's to persuade you what thus saith the Word of God. Because it is the final authority. What stabilizes you? What keeps you from drifting too far from the shore of safety? What keeps you? What keeps you from drifting too far? Is it your bank account? I remember when I didn't have anything in the bank. I remember when I had to scrape up pennies. I remember, sister, that, that when, I, when I would go leave for 8 to 10 hours in a day, I would call myself fasting because I didn't have the money to buy me something. You understand what I'm saying? I may get back to that place, but I'm not there now. I can at least afford a drink. A Pepsi, I'm sorry. 
Nowadays, you've got to clarify things. We got some drinking Christians. We got some Christians that take a little bit of toddy for the body. I'm having some fun, but I'm trying to get some points across. You're a Christian. You're not perfect, but you are forgiven. God loves you. God cares for you. Listen to this. If it's not God and his word, and here's a, here's a plug for you connection groups. If it's not God and his word and the connection with fellow believers, it's not going to hold. It's not, the anchor is not going to hold when the storms of life come our way. You've got to be connected, people. You're connected now with Crosswalk. You don't know what the future holds. You don't know what ministry God's going to lead you into. But you're connected now to, the, to, to what thus saith the word of God. I remember, and I, and I say this just as humbly as I can, I remember when, when Dory and, uh, and Ronnie and, uh, were, went through some really tough spiritual things because of some things that were associated with me and Deborah. And, and I remember when, when Rodney and Sue, I know some things about them, and I know maybe a couple of you others who, who face some spiritual battles. And, and as I came to Crosswalk and as I began to encourage uh, see, uh, see Dory or, or Ronnie in, 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 or talk to them, say, hey, we're over at Crosswalk. You know, I know you've been wounded. Come on over here. And look now, they're spiritual leaders. Look at Rodney and Sue. You know, been hurt, been wounded. If we could just put a portion of the Christians who had been wounded by other Christians in this church, we would have three services a day. Christians wound Christians. I can take what the world throws against me. I can take it when somebody big, bad, steps up and says, I'm an unbeliever, I'm an ungodly man, and I'm out to destroy you. I can take that. But when a Christian comes up and they have a forked tongue, they speak with a forked tongue. They, they're hypocrites, professing but not possessing. I'm like, whoa, where did that come from? I thought they were going to hug me. Instead of, they, instead of they hit me. You saw on the news the, the 28 year old boy that they call the 28 year old man that they caught on camera walking up to his son in the grocery store and just slapping him across the face and just pushing him down. That's not love. That's not a fatherly. God doesn't do that to us no matter what we do. If he did, some of us would be, have a lot of bruises on us this morning. <clears throat> But thank God for his mercy. John 10 and 10 says, The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. One more verse of Scripture. 1 Peter 5 and 8. Be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Listen to this closing. Each of us are unique. Amen? Some of you are more unique. Some of you are really unique. I, I, I subbed in a class one day, and Dana, don't thank me. That's not going to work with you. We saw, I subbed in a class one day, and, 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 and the, one of the students, I had a real challenging, unique student in there. And, uh, and one of the kids came to me and said, um, he's unique. And I said, yeah, he sure is. No, no, she said, no, 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 his name is unique. And I said, wow, how appropriate. And boy, was he unique. Somebody, when he came out of the womb, they saw, whoa. Like Jesus, when he came out, they knew that he was going to be the Savior of mankind. John the Baptist, before he came out, the Bible says, when Elizabeth met Mary, uh, the baby leaped in the womb because he recognized the power and the authority of Christ. Some of you are unique. But listen what it says. I'm, I'm trying to finish. Each of us are unique. God created us that way. Others are watching us. What does your life say? I didn't mean that to rhyme, but when I read that, I said, hey, that rhymes. Each of us are unique. God created us that way. Others are watching. What does your life say? With that in mind, I'm glad you came up here. Josh, could you give me that bag, please? 
Now, I, I, I painstakingly walked up and down the, 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 o, the excuse me, the, be, the, the ocean. Christians go to the ocean. They don't go to the beach. I painstakingly walked up and down and, and picked up seashells. So I could give each one of you the one this morning in my closing message. And what I want to say is, listen, can you two come up here? You two. Take a handful of these and pass them out for me if you don't mind. Just grab a handful and just give one to each and every one. Just like each, they're sitting there, I don't believe he did that. There ain't nothing shy about me. Some of, thank you. Just take this seashell and realize that no two seashells are, are alike. None of us are alike. And just like God created these seashells, God created you. You did not evolve from a process called evolution. You may be here because of revolution, but not evolution. <laughs> and one last scripture. Put it up, Anthony. One last scripture on the uh, First Chronicles 21 and 13. God gave me this just before I started the message. Listen to this. And David said unto Gad, I am in a great strait. Let me fall now into the hand of the Lord, for very great are, the, are the, his mercies. But let me not fall into the hand of man. David had sinned against God, a man after God's own heart, a person who loved God, who slew Goliath and loved God with everything in him. David had made a choice, a wrong choice. You ever make a wrong choice? You ever make a right choice? You ever feel like every choice you make is wrong? You ever feel like every choice you make is right? If you do, you need prayer. Because you've got a proudness about you that needs to be humbled. Listen, David had done wrong. He had, he had, and, and David went before the Lord and David said, listen, God, here's what I want. I want to be judged by God and his mercies because I know they're going to be right. Don't let me fall into the hands of man because people will crucify you. Georgia, you fall short. You don't meet up to certain specifications as the world says. People will crucify you. But God won't. Some of you who have been outcast in society all your life. So I, I almost want to go here, but I've got to close. because they go. How many of you were ever the last one picked on the ball team? Wasn't it? <laughs> I could go with that one, but I'm not. I don't know you well enough to do that. Deborah says I was never picked. She says she was never picked. I've tried to get. Thank you. Oh. Thank you, Robin. She said you picked her. Man, well, we're, this service is great. It's better than I expected. No, it isn't. Yeah, how many of you were picked, picked last on the ball team? It's not a good feeling, is it? I hope it didn't scar you for life. I brought you. <laughs> I'm not even going to go there, Arletta. You're too strong-willed to, to even think. I remember when I was so shy that I wouldn't even speak. I sat at the back of the class and hoping that nobody recognized I was there. Can you imagine that? How God performs great miracles. Listen, 1 Chronicles 21 and 13 says, Let me, let the, the, the mercies of the Lord are great, but let me not fall into the hand of man. Trust God, people. Let me just challenge you to trust God. As you go forward as a Christian, as a child of God, as you go forward in these challenging, troubling times, look at that seashell all along and say, listen, just like God created this, he created me. And he cares for me. And as the politics of this world change and as the morals of this, uh, the fabric of uh, moral of this world changes, don't you be moved by it. 
You love God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul, and watch what God can do with your life. Because just think, March the 17th, 1979, Deborah said, I do. And look what God has brought her through. Hey, I'm just a poet. This lady right here, she doesn't even halfway know me. She's sitting there, wow. He's unique. Do you love the Lord this morning? I want to just challenge you to love God. I, I, I appreciate Pastor Ron and Pastor Brandon for giving me the opportunity. I've, been, I've had the privilege of serving God many, many, many years. I've seen God do great things in my life. I've seen times when my granddaughter Peyton, I didn't even know whether she was being fed or whether she was freezing. And I've seen times middle of the morning, I'd be crying, God, you know, I don't know where my grandbaby's at. I don't know where she's at. God, if I get involved in it, if I do something about it, it's going to get it messed up. I've really got to trust you, God, to do something about it. And right now, God's done some great things about it. Maybe you're facing some difficult times right now. God can do some really great things. I've seen times Deborah and I didn't even have a dime to pay our bills. I've seen God provide. I've seen times when I had to take and be at the mercy of somebody else for transportation. It's not a good feeling. I'm a man. I'm supposed to. Listen. Life has a way of throwing you down, but God will pick you up. 